This quarter showed that our remarkably strat consistent strategy just continues to work. You know, this is the only wireless company in the 35 year history of this industry that's able to offer simultaneously the best value, but also the best network. At when the did same your time. network become the biggest? Did I blink and miss that? It was when we uh, completed our merger with Sprint okay. and then spent two years combining the forces of the company. Sprint had the mother load of Spectrum, but not the financial yep. wherewithal to build it out. And T-Mobile had this incredible growing brand, but didn't have the Spectrum resources. And so it was a marriage that allowed us to put our heads down and go from dead last in the 4G LTE era to first and best in the 5G era. Today, as we speak, we have more landmass covered with ultra capacity 5G, twice as much as our next nearest competitor. And that really shows the leadership that we have now. And that's one of the things that contributing to all the share gains. Is that the, you know, I was, as a cub reporter, I covered uh, Deutsche Telekom out of Bonn. Germany before they even moved to Berlin. I flew over with Ron Summer to Seattle um, when he bought Voice Dream and threw out the first pitch at wow, a Mariners taking game. us back. <laughs> yeah, this is twenty some years ago. Um, but at the time, you know, the idea was, and that was just after the three G auction. So we're in a completely different world now. But at the time, the idea was you wanted this global network, which was awesome for jet setters. But obviously, no one in Seattle really cares that much. They just want it to work where they live. What's the most important pitch to, a, to get somebody to switch over from telephone or Verizon to T-Mobile? You know, the whole story over the last decade or so of our historic growth run has been centered around this idea that we call the uncarrier. That this industry yep. was dominated by a duopoly of carriers that were famous for underserving and overcharging people. And so we wanted to be un that. And what we did was created a brand that's all about customer advocacy, putting customers first, treating them right, changing the rules of the industry in their favor, and proving it year after year with iconic uncarrier moves, like banishing the need for contracts and allowing people to upgrade when they want. And to your earlier point, allowing them to roam the world for free on their rate plan, keeping the data that they bought, enjoying unlimited, all the things that we've done, T-Mobile Tuesdays and breakthrough on customer loyalty, that show that we're willing to change the rules in their favor. And then you fast forward to now to 2020 and beyond where we've become the new version of ourselves add on to that not just these lower prices and more customer centricity but the best network too and it's no surprise that we're experiencing some of the most historic growth rates ever in our history this quarter alone 850,000 postpaid net additions by far the industry leading number for a good reason all right what we'd like to do mike when a ceo darkens our doors put up your stock versus your peers on a five-year basis Compounded annual return for T-Mobile, 16.3% over the last five years. AT&T, minus 1.2%. Verizon, minus 5%. So clearly, the equity market is rewarding the stock here. What are you telling your investors for the next three to four years uh, in terms of your strategy to continue that kind of outperformance? Well, now we're in a phase where our scale can lead to a mass massive delivery of cash flows and shareholder okay. return. And it's not about moving into some staid low growth moment. We can continue to afford massive growth, market leading growth, but this is a scale business. And so now it's also simultaneously about cash flow expansion. You know, this quarter's $4 billion in free cash flow, up 94% from year ago. And we're outlooking cash flows next year that are higher. And so we're hitting this run rate now where we can begin to return cash to shareholders. We announced our first ever dividend last quarter, and that's a part of an overall shareholder remuneration program, including buybacks, that we see in the range of $60 billion within a three, three and a half year time frame. At the, uh, at the time that, you know, 20 years ago, again, when telecom and all these others have paid 50 billion euros to buy 3G uh, licenses, they envisioned this uh, conglomerate media business that would not only operate the network, but also create content and do a million other things. Um, what, what are you looking at in terms of your strategy going forward? Is it just operating the network for your customers or do you also want to, you know, create and deliver content and do other you know media like TMT uh, businesses. Yeah, luckily we didn't get sucked into that vortex at T-Mobile. Yeah. You know, yeah. some of our competitors did and boy did they get their themselves stung. You know, it was a that was a tough thing to see big big acquisitions and then following big big divestitures, you know, at massive shareholder losses. And so 
That's not a path that we went down, but that doesn't mean we're not interested in adjacencies. You know, we've plunged our company into broadband, for example. Uh, it's a very close adjacency. It has a lot in common with wireless. And you know, for six quarters in a row, we've been the broadband growth leader in America with more net additions this quarter than AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, and Charter combined. Mm. So, you know, I guess one of the issues, well, let me just say, we have a lot of credit investors that listen to this show, watch the show on YouTube. Um, your balance sheet, I got, I'm just looking at some rough numbers. I'm not a credit analyst, just a little less than four times leverage, I guess, on your balance sheet. 2.7. Oh, 2.7. Okay. Yep. So is that where you want to be? Do you need to get lower? Um, where, where do you want to go there? Well, with the interest rate environment as it is, we announced earlier, uh, earlier this quarter that we see our way to two and a half next year. Okay. And you know, so we're going to delever a little faster than than we had previously communicated to Wall Street because of the cost of capital. And I think that was really well received. We continue to see upgrades uh, over time. So we're one of the only big issuers in the country that's actually seeing a declining cost of capital because two years ago we were not an investment grade yep. issuer. Today we are, then we moved to corporate family. And so as we get more and more um, improvement in our profile, we're actually seeing some some benefits there. All right, Mike, we got about 30 seconds left here. Subscriber growth, pricing growth, what else do you manage to manage your top line? You know, it's um, it's mostly about share taking, but okay. it's also about these adjacent markets like broadband, which is a no kidding big business for us now yeah. with 4.2 million subscribers. 